Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to revisit the question of what are the best civilizations in Age of Empires 2 as of early 2023. I like to come back to this topic every few years, as of course there's new civilizations added along with balanced changes, making it sometimes unclear how accurate older videos are. Now of course the best civilization is a tricky concept, as it can be map and even to some level skill dependent. So to give a more nuanced overview, we're going to be breaking this into a number of different categories, beginning very generally, but then moving into a few specific maps. I'm mostly going to keep newish or intermediate players in mind here, as I think that's the stereotypical person searching for this kind of topic. But in almost all cases, the civs I'm highlighting are backed up by win rate stats at both high and low skill levels. So even if you're fairly high rated, I think a lot of this list is still true. Given we're also essentially looking at nine different top civilization lists in this one video, I'm not going to go into as much depth with each one as I usually do. And this is just to try something a little different for this video and give a briefer overview. Without beating around the bush, we'll jump right into it and start with the best overall 1v1 Civ going into 2023, judging purely by online win rate over the last roughly six months, which is the Hindustanis. Admittedly, we already have to put some qualifiers on this as they're not as good at lower levels, and it's more the above average 1000 to 1500 ELO crowd that tends to do the best with them. They have some very nice bonuses, with a villager discount, faster attacking camels with a unique imperial upgrade, and good hand cannoneers with more range and armor in the late game. Their castle unique unit is also among the best against archers, thanks to high pierce armor, fast movement, and extra bonus damage. The combination of strong camels against knights and a great unique unit against archer civs makes them feel like an anti-meta pick that counters many of the most popular civilizations and strategies online. To be the best, you have to beat the best and handle the standard meta, which is what Hindustanis excel at doing in the hands of good players. That said, while statistically they may have the best claim to the top Civ title at the moment, I don't think they're a particularly great pick for a new player or someone who just wants to try online for the first time. In fact, we'll make that our second category, which is the best civilization for newer players. There's actually a few schools of thought on this, including whether civilizations like Huns not building houses is good for people starting out, or if it just encourages bad habits, while a similar argument can be made about Lithuanians having an easier start, and I tried to come up with a more creative answer, but to keep things simple, there's really two beginner-friendly civilizations that jump to mind. The first is the Franks, who actually have the highest win rate below 1000 ELO. So if you consider yourself below average compared to the online player base, Franks are probably the safest pick. Their plan at the start for a beginner is often to fast castle into knights, or slightly more advanced is to make scouts, then followed up by knights. This is true of many cavalry civilizations, though the Franks bonuses do a great job of supporting it, with extra income in Dark Age from berries, free farm upgrades, which complements cavalry as you need a lot of farms for that, and then Franks effectively get free bloodlines on their knights with a civ bonus. Bloodlines is the most important tech for cavalry civs, and it's almost like you're getting a better version of it for free, contributing to Franks having some of the strongest paladins in the game as well. Easy to overlook is they also have cheaper castles, which are great defensively as well as offensively to get a foothold in your opponent's base. Altogether, Franks are just an easy and intuitive civilization to pick up and would be my first recommendation. On the other hand, if archers are more of your thing, then I'd suggest Britons. Now they are a pretty average 1v1 performer judging by win rate data, but are again very straightforward and simple to play, with extra range on their archers and a popular unique unit. In fact, Britons are the second most popular pick if you look at sub 1000 elo and the fourth most popular overall, so you're certainly in good company if that's a civ you prefer. Now not to undercut this category, but in all honesty, which civilization you start with probably won't have a big impact on your growth as a player over time. Just maybe avoid Chinese, as they're kind of tricky. But now let's assume you have a bit more experience and are looking for just a classic top 5 list of Arabia 1v1, 1200 ELO and up, which is generally considered the gold standard for civilization balance. Of course, as we've already seen, Hindustanis are at the top of that list, followed by Franks as the top anti-meta and meta picks. The next best civ by win rate is another very good cavalry civilization, the Berbers. This one might catch a few people off guard, as their scout rush is quite generic and their only eco bonus is faster moving villagers so their economy might seem slow compared to other top Arabia picks. That's a fair assessment, though they really take off in Castle Age with discounted knights and camels at the stable. The Berber game plan is pretty straightforward to just overwhelm your opponents with large numbers of cavalry, though on the flip side they also have a very good unique unit, 
which officially is a counter to cavalry archers, but has very well-rounded stats, functioning as basically a better version of the cavalry archer itself. Maybe it shouldn't be surprising now that the next best pick is also a very good cavalry sif, this time the Tudents. They have a fantastic ego bonus with discounted farms and also extra melee armor on their infantry and cavalry, of course including knights. Their units also passively resist conversion, making them unusually tricky to deal with, which is all backed up again with a great castle each economy. And finally, rounding out the top 5 1v1 Arabia sieves at the moment, we have the Huns. They're always a popular pick for not needing houses, and Huns can work well as a cavalry civilization with faster working stables, though also have the flexibility to be played down a crossbow or cavalry archer path, with their discounted cavalry archers making them a nice option in late castle age. Huns have officially been top 5 for years at this point, though aren't nearly as dominant these days as they were maybe a decade ago. But now let's switch to team games, which requires a quick explanation of how civ picking for teams works. To start in a 2v2, generally one player picks a good archer civ and the other a good cavalry civ, so the two types can protect each other from their weaknesses. Cavalry can handle any skirmishers or siege that threaten your teammates' archers and crossbows, and likewise archers eliminate the threat of spears and add some extra damage per second. Things have a similar dynamic but are in some ways a little bit more complicated in 3v3 and 4v4, with the most common choices being archer civilizations on the flanks closest to the enemy and a more mobile cavalry civilization in the pocket between two allies, able to send scouts and knights wherever they're needed. That's not to say you have to play this way, but let's talk about some of the best civilizations for each of those two traditional roles. To start with the best or most popular flank civilizations, these are going to be the strong archer ones, including Mayans with their cheaper archers, Ethiopians with their faster firing archers, and Britons as the top three choices. Britons in particular are worth highlighting here, as their team bonus increases the archery range work speed for your whole team, and given 3v3 or 4v4 have two flank players, that means your other flank going archers is going to have a big leg up on their side as well, simply by being your ally. This may be part of why Britons are quite average in 1v1s, but start to be top 5 on open map team games, just slightly behind Mayans. Huns are also a good flank civilization, helping the pocket stables work faster, while being flexible enough to do archers or cavalry themselves. To flip things around and now look at the best pocket civilizations, we get a very similar list to the best 1v1 civs, given cavalry tend to dominate the top spots in 1v1 Arabia. Hindustanis are again great in this role, with their camels being able to negate enemy knights combined with cheaper villagers for a very strong boom. Franks, of course, are another classic pick, with great knights and paladins, which you're more likely to see given you actually have trade in team games. Teutons and Huns can also be thrown in here again as well, for basically the same reasons they were great in 1v1. Rounding out the top 5, Qajars are another great pocket civilization, as they have good camels like Hindustanis, but also the Shravamsha Rider, which can negate a limited amount of incoming damage from ranged units. That means Qajars themselves can field a mobile counter to either knights or crossbows, which are the two most popular units in team games. But now let's move away from Arabia and get to some of the other maps that are commonly in the ranked pool, as that really can have a big impact on which civilizations are the most popular and successful. We'll start with the best closed map civilizations, of which Arena is the most popular, though other maps can sometimes be thrown under the same label, depending on who you ask. The top three in this category actually run away with it, performing significantly better than the others. Stats-wise, the best last year was easily the Poles, though they've recently been nerfed and have dropped down to number three so far this year. On top of a great farming and booming economy, they have a bonus letting them generate gold while collecting stone meaning in a fast castle, you can just collect stone and get enough gold to advance while being easily able to drop an early castle. That can then lead into getting a unique tech to massively discount their knight's gold cost, or they can make their unique unit, which is quite cheap, fast to create, and can be very difficult to stop as it hacks through your buildings with more bonus damage than you might expect. Arguably, the better pick though is the Turks, who are slightly higher rated and significantly more popular. Their free chemistry and Hazar upgrades give them a massive power spike in Imperial Age, winning about 70% of arena games lasting 25 to 35 minutes, telling you how well they seal the game at that point. The faster created and higher HP gunpowder units can also make up the core of their army and play well on both arena and fortress, though much less so on hideout if you consider that a closed map, which I personally don't, as the palisade walls only give a mild level of safety. Likewise, another top arena pick with good gunpowder is the Portuguese, who were already doing very well last year, but were recently buffed in their early game. 
they get a discount on the gold cost of all of their units, their organ guns can be quite difficult to stop, and there's always the threat of the Faderia, generating infinite resources over the long run that you have to stay aware of. You might expect it's the very long games where they tend to dominate, with Faderia, Bombard Towers, etc. But looking at how often they win in games of different lengths, Portuguese actually have a lot of wins in games lasting under 30 minutes, so they're quite good even before the Faderia comes into play. This is one case where they actually do quite well in Hideout as well, as the second best performer there, and Portuguese overall are having a bit of a resurgence in popularity at the moment. Next up, we have to make a quick mention of Black Forest, though unfortunately we don't have any data on this as it's most popular in the unranked lobby, and none of these stats websites track it. With that said, Mongols and Celts are a couple of the classic picks, partly because you used to need Siege Onagers to cut through trees back in the day, but now even though all you need is Onager, both of those civs still have very good late game armies, incorporating a lot of Siege. Khmer have also developed a very good reputation on Black Forest, as Elephants and Scorpions can be very difficult to stop and quite population efficient. It may be surprising and unwelcome for a lot of people to hear, but Britons are actually not that good on Black Forest, despite being very popular. As while they do have a lot of range that you think would be great in choke points, they can have some difficulty with ramps and other siege, which are very popular on that map. Moving on to the current best civilization on Nomad, this one's pretty clear cut, with Spanish being by far the best choice. Their faster builders mean their town center and dock go up quickly, and they then have a great follow up with a fast castle in Fishboom into Conquistadors. It can be quite hard to punish if they just fast castle, and even a small group of conquistadors can be very effective at raiding, ending a lot of games quite quickly. Next up on hybrid maps, with Four Lakes being a common example in the map pool, a couple of the most popular choices are Japanese, with faster working and stronger fishing ships, and Lithuanians, who have a very specific way they're played, going to wood early because of 150 extra starting food, letting them start docking faster. That's a little more advanced, but they're certainly a high performer if you're using that bonus to its full potential. Huns are also doing extremely well on that map recently, with technically the highest win rate, though with a much lower pick rate than Japanese and Lithuanians. So if they are in fact the best, it seems people aren't fully aware of that yet. And finally, for water maps, Vikings are easily the most popular. That said, there's an argument for Italians or Dravidians being better on water, and certainly have recently performed better stats-wise, at least partly influenced by the fact that Vikings can't build fire galleys. Though any of those three would be a good choice, and have some pretty passive bonuses, so there isn't a steep learning curve with any of them. So that should cover most situations though, and give you at least some ideas of what's in fashion going into 2023. Hopefully it was a useful overview of the various answers to the best AOE2 civilizations and highlights why there really isn't a single answer to that very common question. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.